Alright, fellas. I've been sitting on this one for a bit, but it's okay. It's finally here. This is the best Azurlane tier list ever conceived in the history of mankind, now updated to reflect the state of the game as of September 2024. And, dare I say, the best tier list of all tier lists. Not just limited to Azurlane tier lists. I made this tier list with a tool developed alone by Nico from a Discord. Feel free to play around with it and make your own tier list to share with your friends. There are some neat features like changing the portrait of ships to one of the skins that you like by clicking on them, exporting and importing your tier list, and taking a screenshot. While you can drag and drop ships into the tier list, you can only move them around by clicking on the arrows and moving them one spot at a time for now, as drag and drop within the tiers seems to be a bit difficult to implement, but it may be added in a future update. It's not perfect right now, but I do highly recommend it over the regular tier makers. It's very convenient with all the filters that you can use. Now, onto the content of the tier list. There are going to be some major changes in how I do things compared to last year. First, I'm going to be grouping all Vanguard ships together because hull types do not really make a huge difference in performance. Across all hull types, there are tanks, damage dealers, support and buffers, which compete against each other rather than ships of their own hull types. For example, Eldridge is in direct competition with Aegir and Napoli, as it would be redundant to bring more than one of them. She is not competing with other destroyers with different roles, such as Shimakaze or Kazagumo. Similarly, Cheshire is in competition with the likes of San Diego and Shimanto for a slot, not other heavy and large cruisers. Battleships and carriers though will be separated from each other into their own tier lists, as there are many more distinct differences between the two hulls there. I also did not forcibly put as many ships into my tier lists as I can. There are at least 400 vanguards in the game now fighting for 3 spots in the fleet, and I will admit right now that I have not been using the bottom 80% of ships enough to have a good idea of where they rank relatively to each other. Despite only having about 40 ships on the list, I believe that with the 3 vanguard slots we get in each fleet, it is going to be enough ships to cover all of your needs. If you want to know which is better between Little Belfast and Honolulu, then this is not the tier list for you. You can just play the game for a week and already have access to better vanguards than both of them through light or event construction, drops, and event giveaways. Bickering about differences like those is no different than bickering about whether random purple destroyer gun A is better than random purple destroyer gun B. I have a hunch that other tier lists, which feature hundreds of ships, probably have much higher accuracy in their top tiers than low tiers, and nobody would bother to correct them anyway, so I'm just going to skip the hassle. I like to think that all of my opinions are at least somewhat informed by data, and my conviction matches the quality and quantity of the data that I have. If there are ships that I have not tested sufficiently, I will put them down in the tier called Haven't Used Enough, but give you a ballpark of where I think they would fit. So, not only is this tier list the best, but it is also the most honest. This is where I want everyone to clap. Thank you very much. Anyway, only ships that I believe can make it into at least B tier will be in this category. There are some very obvious cases where I won't bother though, like with Nakimov and Carrier Amagi. I haven't used them in their full form, but I think I have a pretty good idea of where they should be. Within tiers, ships are roughly ordered. Ships near the front will certainly be more valuable than ships near the back, but ships that are just one or two spots next to each other will not have much of a difference between each other, and most likely they will have different functions altogether and cannot be directly compared. Also, I will be biased toward a damage contribution as opposed to survivability, mostly because of Eldritch Retrofit, making survivability more or less a non-issue. The cutoff for being able to make it onto the tier list is around Hatsuzuki and Friedrich Karl. I know there are going to be many people's favorites that didn't make it onto the list. If there is any ship in particular that you think should be on here, because they are clearly better than another ship that is on the list, then give your reasoning in the comments and I will consider them in a response video. Do note that I'm not asking for ships that are about as good as the bottom of B tier, but rather ships that are at least around top of B tier, or bring something unique and valuable. Now let's finally dive into the ships and why I chose to place each one where they are. First up is Plymouth. She's basically an auto-include if you have a decently strong battleship as your flagship. Her damage is both incredibly high and consistent, and her total contribution with her flagship buff is among the highest in the game. She is also bulky enough to tank about 90% of the game if not more, and is nigh indestructible if not used as the main tank. If you're not using a battleship in the flagship position, 
or a sad battleship is a buffer like Mikasa, who does not bring high damage of her own. There are better options than her, but she doesn't become useless, just outclassed by other options, particularly the ones that are actually very close to her in placement. Next up is Eldritch Retrofit. She is a specialist who does three things very well. First, she quite literally doubles the survivability of the entire vanguard because her invulnerability lasts 10 seconds with a 20 second cooldown. The fact that it was changed so that it can activate right at the start of battle means that you always get the invulnerability first, so in something like a 35-ish second battle, your vanguard could be invulnerable for 20 seconds out of 35, which is even more than doubling their EHP. For a comparison, take Napoli, who is currently the tankiest ship in the game without any external help, and Hindenburg, who is pretty much a glass cannon. And if you put Eldridge's buff on Hindenburg, then Hindenburg is equally, if not more tanky, than Napoli. Additionally, she has a very consistent and powerful slow effect, putting her at direct competition with Aegir. While Aegir's damage output is considerably higher than Eldridge's, you don't usually bring Aegir for her damage, but rather the bulk and the utility, both of which are outclassed by Eldridge Retrofit. If you have Eldridge Retrofit, Vanguard's survivability becomes a complete afterthought, which is why most tanks may seem a bit lower than expected on the tier list. Additionally, she is also the best anti-submarine warfare ship in the game, so aside from her use as a tank and slower in meta and arbiter fights, she can also trivialize enemy submarines in chapters 14 and 15, and allow you to run two class cannon ships in the other two vanguard slots, like Unzen and Hindenburg, without issue. When relevant, her strengths completely morph the way fleets are built, which is why I put her this high. Next up are Hindenburg and Unzen, who have very similar strengths. They deal the most damage out of all vanguard ships. Hindenburg wins against light and medium armor as well as shielded enemies, while Unzen wins against heavy. I prefer using Unzen in campaign as well because her torps can instantly delete troublesome battleship enemies that completely wreck your main fleet, while Hindenburg has to slowly DPS them down. I do have Hindenburg slightly higher though because Unzen is more reliant on carrying oxytorps for her maximum potential, while Hindenburg doesn't lose out on much from using defensive auxiliary when necessary. I think they're about equally valuable though, and either one can be better than the other depending on the situation. Next up is Laffy 2, the greatest ship for chapter 15, by virtue of being able to do literally everything. She is also a very good tank in general, with some damage support for carrier fleets, which comes in very handy when using Kearsarge plus Yorktown 2 compositions. She also can take the Eagle Union damage control protocol, which along with her own last stand skill can buy her an extra 10 seconds or more, which is invaluable in high pressure fights. The reason I put her down here instead of anywhere higher though is because her damage output is lacking, and the tankiness is not as valuable with Eldridge's addition, but she's still literally top 5 and the second highest tank in quotation marks, so not low by any means. Next up is Mogador, who has exceeded my expectations upon discovering her synergy with Unzen and realizing the value of Alsace. Despite still not being the highest solo damage dealer in any category, her damage is top tier against light armor, while having relatively decent survivability, particularly in tough fights due to her invincibility. Her synergy with Alsace makes Alsace's damage taken debuff permanent, which helps Vanguard damage considerably. When placed in the tank position, her dash attack drags the rest of the Vanguard in front of the enemy, not quite within face torp distance, but it guarantees that torpedoes will actually be aimed at the enemy as opposed to nothing. As you've seen from my recent Nagato metal comps, Unzen with low enough reload and the Rainbow Quint mags has just the right cooldown to take advantage of this dash attack effect, guaranteeing that her torpedoes are always at least directed at the enemy. Both Alsace's debuff and the dragging effect significantly boost the effective damage of Unzen by almost 50% in total, while also both setting up for your carriers to deal much more damage as well. This means that despite her own damage being extremely light skewed due to all of it coming from her main gun, she also ended up being one of the best ships against heavy armor as well. It's difficult at this point for me to call her a niche ship because she somehow always finds a use, and despite her unique toolkit, she was one of the ships with the highest ceilings when used properly. There are still a couple of things I would nitpick about her, not in regards to damage though because it's enough, but rather just the fact that her 12 second dash is a little too slow to set up her own torpedoes as well as the torpedoes of non-heavy cruisers, and I wish it could have been 10 seconds instead. The fact that the dash attack can miss making it never 100% reliable is a bit annoying but that's how the game works and I think it's fine that an exception was not made for her. I do wish that her invulnerability did not cost 5% HP every time though. 
It could be shorter in duration, perhaps 1.5 seconds flat, rather than up to 2.5 seconds, but it should just activate instantly on Dash, which would make her feel much better to use. After that, we have San Diego, who is very similar to Laffy 2, but trades tankiness for a bit more damage and even more anti-air. I just put her here because Laffy finds use outside of campaign as well, whereas it's a bit more difficult for San Diego because she's lacking damage buffs and overall tankiness. But she's arguably slightly better for chapter 15, depending on the other ships that you have, and the difference in two spots within a tier is pretty much non-existent. After that, we have Kazagumo, which depending on who you ask, may be a controversial placement. Simply put, if you're using a carrier fleet against medium, and especially heavy armor, then she is the most consistent Vanguard contributor. In the current Nagato fight, Kazagumo consistently contributes as much damage as Unzen in just a two carrier fleet. If you're using a third carrier instead of Alsace, then Kazagumo's contribution would be even higher. Keep in mind that Unzen is only performing as well as she is currently because Mogador is setting up all of her torpedoes, and even without a specific setup, Kazagumo is keeping up. Although she is not as valuable these days against medium armor due to the addition of Kearsarge, and not really relevant at all against light armor, heavy armor remains the only armor type where carriers tend to have a pretty significant advantage over battleships with the likes of Shinano and Amagi leading the charge, and you can bet your ass that as long as that's true, Kazagumo will remain the best damage option in the vanguard against any heavy armor enemy. Her one real weakness is that she is quite squishy, but I would go as far as to say that it is almost always worth protecting her over the alternatives. The next ship in line is Aegir, who just about a year ago had a good argument for being the best vanguard in the game. She still doesn't really have any weak points, but the competition has just gotten a lot stiffer. In particular, Eldritch has taken two of her most important roles and did it better. Aegir's Torpedo Slow suffers from the same issue as Mogador's Stab, which is the fact that it can actually miss. Not only that, but Aegir's accuracy is much lower than Mogador's as well, being a large cruiser. On the other hand, Eldritch has much higher accuracy and her slow is constantly reapplied 10 times over the course of the skill's activation. It is also a bit more of a hassle to sink compared to Eldritch's slow, which is directly tied to the flagship's attack. Another one of her useful effects, which is her armor break, has also been improved upon by Guam. Now, I've only talked about her negative so far, but she is still one of the best vanguards in the game. A top 2 to 4 tank, depending on how you want to view Eldritch and Mogador. She has many very useful effects that all used to be extremely rare for vanguards, but over the past year there have been many ships introduced with better versions of those effects, hence her drop in the ranks. She's kind of a jack of all trades, but specializing usually tends to lead to more longevity in the meta. That is not to say Aegir hasn't had her time in the spotlight. Next up is Guam, who I can see an argument for being above Aegir. There are a couple of things that I did not realize with Guam at the start. First of all, her 50% anti-air buff is obscenely high. It doesn't really matter that her anti-air gun efficiency is on the low side compared to ships like Cheshire and Isuzu, because the stat buff makes up for it, and then some more. She is one of the best anti-air ships in the game, although I still value San Diego and Laffy 2 over her in Chapter 15, due to the fact that they can also take care of submarines. Next, her armor brick has gotten a huge increase in value with the addition of Elsass, one of the strongest battleships in the game, who also has a preload. If you put Alsace in the top position in the main fleet, Guam applies armor break immediately when the battle starts, which is much more consistent than Aegir's distance-based armor break. She's also better at tanking than Aegir in practice because she is able to use the Eagle Guinean Elite Damage Control Protocol, making her last longer in high-pressure fights. Lastly, she also just deals slightly more damage due to her barrages. Basically, if you don't need a slow, she's an upgrade over Aegir in boss fights in pretty much every single way, and with the likes of Soyuz, Bismarck Sway, Nakimov, Implacable, and so on, Aegir's slow is no longer an integral part of most fleets. Next up is Helena. I don't care that you don't need to use her or whatever, the fact that it's a flex to say that you did not use her should be proof enough of her value. While she has been overrated for a long time in campaign, I think she's overhated for her meta fights, especially for progressing players. If you're not that guy, you should just stick to using Helena and save yourself the time of chasing the new best vanguard ship for the current meta fight, which then gets completely forgotten about 3 months later. After that is Aurora. Similar to Kazagumo, when there's a high evasion enemy that her debuff works against, she's the best ship in the game, but she's even more of a pain to keep alive. 
I rate her just a bit lower than Kazakumo because I feel like there are other options that are nearly as good against light armor in the Vanguard, but options against heavy armor are much more rare, being limited to pretty much only Unzen. The final ship in the S tier is Taiyuan Retrofit. She is about tied with Hindenburg for damage against light armor, and she can also start a very powerful burn with her missile, which makes her damage underrated against medium armor as well, when there are no other sources of burn. Mogador is slightly under her in terms of DPS, but makes up for it in spades and other areas, which I have already talked about. She's neither tanky nor squishy, so you don't have to do too much babysitting when using her, but obviously she's not exactly indestructible. She, along with the other two DDGs, are the most consistent ships in the game, but can only be used effectively in single enemy fights, so do keep that in mind. Next up on the list is Aurora. Her buff is timeless and scales with whoever the best Vanguard damage dealers are, but you still need to have developed your big damage dealers in order to make use of her, so she's not an S tier. If we ever get to the point where our Vanguard significantly power creeps the likes of Hindenburg and Unsen in damage, they will likely be completely phased out, while Aurora will still find a use here and there. After Aurora is, sadly, one of the ships that I hold very near and dear to my heart. Shimakaze has fallen out of the top tier because of two reasons. First, Unzen has pretty much taken her role as the premier damage dealer against heavy armor, both in campaign and boss fights, with the addition of the USS Stray Torp tech and the Mogador Drag tech. Second, I gotta be honest, I have not found a reason to play the game on manual for a long time. She has the potential in her numbers to keep up with Unzen on auto, but the main issue is her speed, in every aspect. With her speed being as high as it is, a vanguard featuring Shimakaze has a much higher likelihood of randomly moving to the top or bottom of the screen and whiffing their torpedoes. Her reload is also very fast, meaning even with no additional reload from fleet tech, she still can't sink her torpedoes with Mogador to guarantee them. She is also a lot squishier than Unzen, and needs to be babysat a bit more in order to survive. Before Unzen came out, she was undoubtedly the queen of vanguard damage in campaign, and also against heavy armor, but with the addition of Unzen, there is not much of a reason to use her on auto. Due to her high speed and the ability to sit on one torpedo salvo while charging up a second, she is still the best ship in the game on manual. The speed allows for better maneuverability, and you can use her torps at the exact time that you need without sacrificing DPS. Next up is Ibuki. Honestly, there's a pretty good argument to be made for her being ahead of Shimokaze. They both have similarly powerful preloads that are stronger than Unsen's. While Ibuki's DPS is definitely lower than Unsen's, her better survivability and lower speed make her at least a side grade when compared to Shimakaze. She is definitely not a ship to sleep on if you're liking Unzen, and even if you have Unzen, there are still times where Ibuki can perform better. Next up, Sirius has a very powerful buff for carriers, but the hit rate portion of it must be used as well in order for its value to make up for her own total lack of personal damage. Depending on the specific fleet being used against the boss, Sirius could actually find a spot in the fleet beyond all the ships above her, which is why I have her placed this high. Next up is Shimanto, who has very similar use cases to Lafayette 2 and San Diego, having some of the best anti-air in the game, while dealing consistently high damage and having great survivability, but she lacks the anti-submarine power that the other two have to make her as valuable as them in Chapter 15. She does have a niche, which is her ability to erase all the burns from your fleet, and while it is undoubtedly a useful effect, it is a bit hard to time it to exactly when burns are applied to your fleet to make the most out of it. Next up is Anchorage who was right up there at the top with A-gear last year, but has fallen due to the additions of Eldritch, Laffy 2, Guam, and also Napoli. I feel like it is quite self-explanatory why that is, so I won't elaborate too much further. Next up are Kronstadt and Bayard, who are the top of the line stat sticks. Just toss them into any campaign mobbing fleet and they'll do work. Kinda like Drake, but more modernized versions. The next two ships, Brest and Yatsen, are both incredibly sturdy ships that work very well in chapters 14 and 15, but just like the other tanks of old, they have fallen in favor of better options. Brest is tankier than Kronstadt, but deals less damage, and doesn't have a useful cross-fleet effect like Kronstadt. I don't value survivability as much these days, which is why I have her just after Kronstadt. Again, a couple spots is pretty much no difference. After that, we have the other two DDGs, who share the same strengths as Taiyuan, although to a lesser degree. The fact that Taiyuan has a reload buff while these two don't actually makes a pretty big difference because it often means an extra salvo of missiles. I wish it was possible to use them all in a fleet, but the fact that you can't even fit them in a proper fleet these days shows how many great options we have waiting for just 3 slots. And finally, in the last spot of A tier, we have Cheshire who is still a great anti-air options, 
just not as good as the ones above her. Now we move on to B tier. These ships are still very good, but I don't think there's anyone here who isn't directly outclassed by ships in the two tiers above. Harbin and Scylla are two similarly good stat sticks. Scylla has a bias towards light armor, and Harbin has a bias towards heavy. Scylla has a bit of utility with her anti-air and carrier buffs, and Harbin has a bit of utility with her smokescreen. Their damage is quite similar, although Scylla relies a lot on her barrages, so she's not good at all in single enemy fights, but is excellent in campaign. Next up is Felix, who is a great stat stick, similar to the likes of Kronstadt and Bayard, but just weaker. She is capable of taking some marines, but things can get kinda dicey when out of ammo. Next are Emden and Marseillaise, both of which are rare vanguard faction buffers. Their buffs are quite minor, and you would need to use a full faction fleet to make good use of them, but French and Ironblood fleets are quite decent these days, so you can have a bit of fun using them. Faction fleets are by no means the best even with their buffs, but all the ships below Sirius are not the best for anything in the game, so that's a non-argument. Next, Aido Noshiro is currently probably the best torpedo buffer in the game, and her stats are pretty decent as well, but not outstanding. Her personal damage is around mains level, which is lower than Scylla and Harbin. The main issue with her, like many of the ships in this tier, is that there are just better options. For example, Aurora with her universal damage buff, and Mogador who can take torpedoes not just hit harder, but consistently as well. I would not be surprised, though, to see her being used more with the addition of more powerful torpedoes, as we're on year 7, and there's still barely anything that is better than quad mags for auto. After Noshiro is John Dark, who was the previous best vanguard protector in the game, but Eldritch stole her job. She is still the second best at helping your vanguard survive, but it's not a close second. Next up are Friedrich, Karl, and Azuma. Both are decently strong stat sticks slash tanks. Drake would be around this level as well, probably slightly under Karl and maybe tied with Azuma, but I decided to make her the cutoff. After Karl and Azuma is Voroshilov, one of the rare battleship buffers in the game with pretty good bulk and average damage. The numbers on her skills are quite low, which is why she's not super good, but I feel like she's more useful than many of the other statistic light cruisers in the game. The next four ships are what I would consider to be the better destroyers. Kawakaze and Laudacieux are the creme de la crop for gold destroyer damage, while Jervis and Hazuzuki pull respectable damage while slightly increasing the survivability of the fleet. The final ship in the real tiers is Golden Hind. She is extremely useful for one reason. Her auxiliary, which gives the fleet one extra ammo, makes full auto farming chapters 14 and 15 4 a total breeze, as the single no ammo fight is the hardest part about full clearing those stages. Now, I'll go over the ships that I haven't used enough to confidently place them appropriately. Starting off, I think Napoli is probably right above Anchorage, maybe at the very front of A, but the first few ships are not hard tanks anyway, so it's not directly comparable. She's insanely tanky and deals good damage, but offers little to nothing else, just a bit of smoke that you cannot control. In practice, I think the extra stats she has will make her more useful than Anchorage, but her survivability is a bit overkill, and it's not worth losing out on things that the S-tier ships provide for it. Next, Jinsu Meta has the potential to be high A to low S, because her torpedo buff works for Unzen and is very easy to time. She can also be used as a tank and actually prefers losing as much HP as possible in a fight, making her ideal for high pressure single enemy fights. I just haven't raised her to level 125 yet, so I have not really given her a proper test, but she is definitely a good ship. Next up is Wichita Meta. Her damage is quite insane, but I don't know what her survivability will look like in stages more difficult than Chapter 13. I'll have to give her a proper go after I max her out, but in Chapter 13 she had no trouble staying alive without a proper healer, and when her HP was low enough, she was dealing more than 50% more damage than Drake, which would put her output around Hindenburg's level. For now, I would guess A tier potential. Next is Watarase. She is a stat stick with a single selling point, which is her insanely strong and consistent barrage, which fires every time the flagship fires. I look forward to using her with Musashi, using the blue IJN gun on Musashi. It might not be the best, but it'll sure be fun. I think she has the potential to make it into B tier off damage alone, but probably no further than that. Next up is Fargo. She also has a pretty decent barrage, but it has an annoying 30% chance to not proc. Depending on her damage output, and with her minor buff to the flagship, she could make it into B tier next to Voroshilov or so. The final ship is Haman too, who used to be a better option than Kazagumo for chapter 15, due to all of her utility being extremely relevant. But there are now at least 3 ships that cover all her roles but better, which weren't available before, being Eldritch, Laffy, and San Diego. 
While she does provide air raid assist, it's not necessarily better in campaign because one of the two carriers she's buffing is usually going to be Unicorn, which isn't as much value as a real damage carrier, compared to the other Vanguards who just deal a lot of extra damage and are much tankier as well. I will now show you what the tier list looks like with only ships in the same roles, so you can better tell what the relative ranking of ships that share the same roles are. Once again, I believe that the ships I did not include are not better than the lower end of B tier, but if you have any ship you want to push for, then feel free to do so in the comments. Ideally, try to list ships that you believe should be at least around the top half of B tier, and give a good reason. If there's anything you disagree with within the tiers, you can list those as well. If it's about the Q tier though, sorry but you're just wrong. Alright, that's it for the Vanguard tier list. The others will come. Sometime. Yeah, they will come, for sure guys. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.